Our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 2. In that same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When I was a college student going to Purdue's home football and basketball games, uh, it was one of my favorite parts of Purdue, which might not be a surprise. Uh, but it's, it's one thing to pump for your fist and, and yell at your TV, right, which is a lot of fun. But it's, it's a whole nother level when you're pumping your fist and yelling at the top of your lungs with thousands of other fans. And one of the best bonuses to being in person is the marching band. The marching band helps the crowd get loud. Uh, my favorite part of being a fan was getting pumped up and, and uh, even when my team's lost, it was still fun to just yell at the top of your lungs sometimes. And nothing helps you do that more than the marching band. They get everyone singing the school fight song. They might do a, a fan favorite that everyone knows the lyrics to and everyone's singing. Or perhaps that's the first down chant on offense or, or a fourth down chant on defense. And, I mean, I understand the reasoning, but it's still a shame that Bands across the land are very limited or not allowed on the field at all due to COVID. It's because it's a really a, a major part of the experience. It's not limited to sporting events, though. Songs are perhaps the, the greatest way that we express our emotions, whether it's desperation, loneliness, sorrow, uh, excitement, or joy. Belting it out at the top of your lungs almost always makes you really feel it more than just saying it would. And if you've ever been in a band or marching or otherwise or sung in a choir, maybe you can understand a little bit of what the angels were doing there in, over the fields of Bethlehem that night. They were trying to lead God's people in praise, although it was sort of interesting circumstances. Of course, I don't think we really hear any examples of, of this happening before in the scriptures. And what I mean is, we see, we call them the angel choir quite a bit, but this is the only time that I, that I know of um, that the angels are singing on earth. I mean, Isaiah and Ezekiel talk about angels before the throne room of God singing holy, 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 and uh, Revelation has more of the same but whenever we encounter angels on earth, they're talking, or judging, or announcing, not singing. Today's gospel reading is a glaring exception. The angelic choir, in this case, has turned into a marching band. Uh, in, in fact, they are the best divine band in the land, or in the heavens, for that matter. They are announcing God's arrival, and you know, much like at the beginning of a game, you have the, the loud and bombastic movement or music announcing uh, that the game is about to start that gets even the, the laziest of fans up on their feet and clapping along. Perhaps this was one verse of the Heaven's Fighting Song, school fighting song. Right? One of the most joyous moments of a game is at the end of home games, at least as how it's been where I've been uh, in high school and college. At the end of the game, the, the marching band would come out, and everybody and the, the, the athletes and the stands and, and the fans uh, would come and sing the, the, fight, the school fight song in victory. Well, this angelic announcement is kind of a combination of the two, both the announcement for everyone to get out of their seats and get ready for the beginning of the game, but also... It's an announcement of a victory that is already 
assured. Because the angels are confident that with Jesus, the victory is assured. So, why are the angels singing on earth when typically they hold concerts exclusively in heaven? Well, they tell us why. They bring good news of great joy. For today a Savior has born, been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So join us. Join us in glorifying God in heaven because he is bringing peace to you on earth. Maybe as we think about this event, it helps to think of the angels as, as if they're going about going to work. After all, the angels do God's work. And in this case, the earth is one of their work sites. The other times we hear from angels, they seem rather businesslike in their approach. And sometimes their business is quite serious. Even sometimes it's the difference between life and death. Without exception, we know this, when the angels appear, they inspire fear and awe. As cute as those precious moment angels are, they're much more like cute babies or toddlers than they are like real angels. We've got angels of power, archangels, angels of plague and pestilence, angels with swords. Sure, they, they sometimes deliver messages of strength and hope, but they are nevertheless fearsome, pretty much without exception. Yet here the angels are singing. They've let their guard down, if only for a minute. Perhaps they've taken their helmets off their swords and they're lifting them up in the air for a moment as they announce and sing the praises of Christ, the newborn king. Now, obviously the, the scriptures don't say this, but I wonder if there wasn't a conversation in heaven beforehand between the angels and God. The angels said, we've got to tell somebody and God replies something that, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, I get this is big. In fact, it's gigantic, but we're keeping things on the DL, so don't go spouting it off to government leaders or those who are important or well-connected or, or anybody who's highly regarded. I mean, don't go to any major city. Don't go, a gather, don't go to a gathering place. In, in fact, just stick to the sticks and make the announcement where no one high up will get wind of it or, or notice that anything is going on. The angels play, okay, Lord, just, just so long as we get to tell someone. We just can't keep it in. We're bursting with excitement. You see, the heavens just couldn't quite contain themselves entirely. And, and that joy bursts forth to those lucky shepherds who got to see such an important announcement, perhaps in part because they were regarded as not important by the world. And still today, I think, even just coming into church and seeing all the decorations, it's easy for us to catch some of that joy. Some of that joy that spills over into the Christmas hymns and songs and is expressed in a variety of ways. I think a lot of people, some of the favorite parts of the Christmas season at church is those Christmas hymns. And it's, it's no accident that artists and songwriters throughout the ages have been inspired to try to recapture and, and bottle up the notes of joy in heaven and on earth at the arrival of the Savior and Redeemer of creation. Uh, we're, of course, talking about something that was missed by the vast, vast majority of the world, and yet this announcement was probably the most important one that had ever been announced to this point. Still today, it's sometimes easy to lose track of what's most important easy at Christmas. And what I mean by that is sometimes it's still easy to lose track of, well, our Savior at Christmas. It can be drowned out by commercials or covered up and by glitz and glam and wrapping paper. But the joy of Christ come to earth cannot be muted. Not, it's not possible. However overlooked it may be by the vast majority of the world or how misunderstood or misapplied. God's kingdom is coming. And the salvation of the world is advancing despite how things sometimes look and feel. Can you hear it now? The kingdom of God still comes among us today. You can hear it not only in the beautiful notes or in the poetic words, but I think even more importantly, you can discern it in the expression of faith in Christ our Lord, as we sing song, hymns and songs of praise to our coming King, 
some of us singing them slightly better than others. But what matters is because that is truly what is, after all, the best way to welcome God's kingdom, by faith. By placing our trust in Jesus, born in Bethlehem, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. And that's why we still sing, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. In Jesus' name, amen.